آئی ہیو اے ٹاپک اٹ ٹاکس اباؤٹ احتکاف کی فضیلت اور تزکیہ میں کردار دا ورچوز آف احتکاف اینڈ اٹس رول ان تزکیہ بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم نحمد و نسلی علی رسول الکریم اما بعد احتکاف مینس دیٹ یو ہیو ٹو بی ان دا ہاؤس آف اللہ سبحانہ و تعالی سو دا فضیلت وٹ ہاؤ کین اے پرسن اسٹارٹ ٹاکنگ اباؤٹ دا فضیلت of being in the house of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Today we, nobody has to tell us what is, it is like to be invited by the president, governor, and such dignitaries, right? But today we have to be taught what it is like to be invited by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in his house. When we come in the house of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he is the master of everything, right? Lahu mulku samawati wal ard. He has the dominion of the heavens and the earth. Everything is in his control. And you give himself in, your, in his control then there is nothing to worry about, right? Uh, Musa alayhi salam, when he was coming back with his wife, the daughter of Shuaib alayhi salam, he was coming back to uh, Misr, the Egypt, from Madian. In the night time, he got separated from his rest of the caravan. And it was a cold night. And some narrations say that his uh, wife was going through the pains of, uh, she was about to deliver a baby. So there was so much difficulties. There was lack of food. There was a cold night. And then you are lost, right? And then the wife has special days. So there's too many problems coming together. And Musa alayhi salam, as he's walking, he saw on the right side there is some light. So there's some fire. And he told his wife, you stay. And let me go and I'll grab some piece of light so that we can have a warm night. We can, set up, we can uh, fire up some wood and we can have, spend the night in a warm place. And maybe I will find some guidance. Maybe there is somebody who is living there who has a light on. And uh, maybe I'll find a way to home. Maybe this is how we would resolve some of our problems. When he goes up there, the story changes. It is not the fire. It is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Inna ni an Allah. This is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala talking to him. Right? So now Allah is talking to him. Musa alayhi salam started having a long conversation. You can read in the Quran several places where it talks about this dialogue between Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the Musa alayhi salam in the first time. It's a long conversation. Allah talks about it in several different surahs. It did not probably end in two, three minutes. It took its time probably, right? But Musa alayhi salam did not say, oh, please, <laughs> ya Allah, you know my wife, you know, she's going through some trouble and it's cold. Let me at least make her comfortable and I'll come back. We'll uh, pick up the conversation from here. He, did he say that? No. Why he was in the presence of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, who is Malikul Mulk, who has in his control everything. So why worry about anything why I'm in front of, when I'm in front of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Why do I worry about anything? Right? So this is Musa alayhi salam. If it were some of the people like us with the weak iman, we would have like, Ya Allah, please two minutes. You know, you know, you know, today we don't have time for the salah, we don't have time for the Jummah. What do we say? Two minutes. You know, you, Allah knows. Allah knows what we are going through. They don't know. When you come, in the house of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, all those problems are going to be taken care of, right? Just like Musa alayhi salam. But anyways, so this is the fadilat of being in the house of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. What could be bigger than that? And then, because of this reality, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he never missed his time in the aitikaf. Every Ramadan he would make the aitikaf. And one time he missed his aitikaf, and the following year he made the aitikaf of 20 days. He doubled the amount, right? And one of the biggest benefits you get in the month of Ramadan is you look for the Laylatul Qadr. You look for one time, the first Ramadan, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa he made the itikaf of the whole month in search of Laylatul Qadr. Right? Once you have Laylatul Qadr, and when you are in the time of itikaf, you definitely get a Laylatul Qadr. Outside of the Ramadan, you have to make sure you're awake in the night. But a person who's in the itikaf, whether he's praying or not praying, either Amalan, he is in the prayer or Hukman is in the prayer. Either he's praying or he's waiting for some prayer. All the times that a person spends as an etikaf in the house of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, this is all recorded as if he's praying. You know, this is, so you would never miss Laylatul Qadr. Even if you sleep through the night, yeah, that sleeping too would be counted as an ibadah. So you would never miss. You cannot miss actually etikaf. You cannot be dry when you are submerged in the water. So when you're submerged in the rahmat of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you will not be dry. You will be soaked in the rahmah of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And what is the ajr? The ajr of making the itikaf, they say that nobody can mention how much ajr there is. Right? But for some understanding, Rasulullah sallallahu said, whoever makes this ten, last ten days of itikaf of Ramadan, 
he gets the ajr of two hajj and two umrah. Two hajj and two umrah. And this is the hadith narrated by Hussein radiallahu anhu. And Ibn Abbas radiallahu anhu says that if a person one day and one night spend in itikaf in the house of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the ajr of that is that Allah separates between him and the Jahannam three trench, teen khandaq. And the size of a trench is so big that it can accommodate the heavens and the earth. So basically Allah wants, he is not ending up in the Jahannam. Right? It's so huge, the distance is so huge. In other words, he is so far away from the Jahannam, that's one day spent in the house of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So what more you would want to know about uh, the barakah of itikaf, the virtues of itikaf, that you are almost like angels, right? Except that they are, they are completely in obedience of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You too are in the masjid in obedience of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The only difference is that this person, since he's a human, he eats and drinks a little. The angels don't do that. So this is, uh, this is another virtue. Now, the role of itikaf is in tazkiyah. What is the benefit of tazkiyah? If you have a clean heart, if you have a pure heart, right? You have a certain attitude towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and a certain attitude towards the makhluk of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Right? You are sincerely doing the ibadat of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with a certain attitude. And that is distracted because you are in the works of the dunya. You have business of the dunya. That is why you're distracted. You're not, a, 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 you're not able to accomplish it. So when you're in the itikaf, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives you all the time. Because now you don't have to worry about food. You don't have to worry about going to the family. You don't have to worry about anything. You know in your mind that I'm here for 10 days. I'm not going anywhere. So that distraction is taken away. Without that distraction, right, you worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And if you do all the mustahabbat and the sunan and, itika, uh, and the mustahabbat of the itikaf, you're not wasting your time. You're not wasting your time on TikTok. You're not wasting your time on Facebook. No social media, no messages, no unnecessary calls. So when you do that, you know, now your time is fully spent on the ibadah. And now... What you should have, the lifestyle you should have after the tazgiyah, this is what you have for these 10 days. Right? Wali banke kya lagega? Now, aapko pata chalega, ye lagega wali banke. Right? So, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives you a final product. This is what you're going to be like if you have this tazgiyah. So, now you know what you should be like. And what is, not let, what, is not, what is stopping you from getting here? You can self-reflect. Oh, I'm... Subhanallah, my life is beautiful. I'm reciting Quran in the day. I'm finishing my tasbihat. I'm doing this. I'm doing this. I'm still happy. So why do I need to watch TikTok? To make myself happy, I'm already happy. Why should I overeat when I'm doing this? I waste my time so much because I'm doing riba. Let's not do backbiting anymore. Because I have bad feelings about such a such person. So that much time is consumed in something which I don't really want. So that is tazkiyah. You can self-reflect and find out your own mistakes. What is stopping you from getting to this stage? So a takaf is a beautiful time. Plus, you are with your sheikh and Hazaji is going to be there. And with Hazaji, you can even consult. Uh, Hazaji, I'm going through this challenge in my life. What can I do to overcome this challenge in my life? You know? So there are certain things you will self-reflect and find out for yourself and some Hazaji. And then, what is your attitude should be with other people? You know? So when you are with other mutakifin, other all the mutakifin, they are the guest of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So how you should treat the guest of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? You should not have any ill feeling about uh, the guests, right? What did Nuh alayhi salam said? Uh, no, Lut alayhi salam. He said, do not, do not dis, disrespect me in the matters of my guest. Wala tughzuni fi dhaifi. Right? So actually the disrespect of the guest is the disrespect of the host. Right, so nobody was disrespecting Lut alayhi salam. They were disrespecting their guests. So he said that their disrespect is my disrespect. So the respect and of the mot other motakif is the respect of Allah subhanahu wa taala. Right. So you have to learn how to respect each other. Right. Ibn Abbas radiallahu anhu he was making the itikaf in Masjid al Nawi. A man came, and he was in a lot of stress. People can see it from his face. And he said, "You look troubled. What happened?" And he said. He said, I have a loan. And, and he pointed to the qabr of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And he said, by the, by the respect of the sahib al-qabr, for this person who is in the qabr, I'm not able to take this burden off of me. I cannot pay this loan off. So Ibn Abbas radiallahu anhu said, maybe I can assist you. Is that going to help? He said, you can see for yourself if it's going to help. And Ibn Abbas radiallahu anhu, he 
he got up and he was leaving the masjid. Somebody said, reminded of him of his etikaf. He said, if, uh, you know, you you know that you are in etikaf or you forgot, and you cannot leave the masjid when you are in etikaf. He said, I did not forget, but I also remember the call of Sahib Hazal Qabr, the person who of this Qabr. He said that whoever whoever fulfilled the needs of another brother, he gets the ajr of ten years of etikaf. So I'm. I'm going to get the 10 years of etikaf if I sacrifice this one etikaf. So you learn to have good akhlaq. You learn to have a relationship with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And that is the outcome of tazkiyah. Right? That is really the outcome of tazkiyah. There is nothing else. The tazkiyah means that you are in a state where you understand your haq with Allah and you have understand your haq with the makhluk of Allah. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, in just in matter of 10 days, He shows you what the final picture is going to look like so he puts you in that situation and then you get to decide for yourself and self reflect may allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us tawfiq wa akhiru da'wana alhamdulillah rabbil alamin